gracefully and forcefully to all his hearers. Take, for instance, the clarinet concerto, which we're going to hear first. It's a rather short piece in one continuous movement, uh, the first half uh, slow and the second half fast, with the two halves separated by a brilliant cadenza for the clarinet alone. Now, in this fast second part, we get a clear, bright picture of one aspect of Copelandese, which is the big city, sophisticated Copeland style, which is nourished on jazz, on New York slang, uh, Latin American rhythms, the tough accents of the city streets, like this tune. <laughs> See what I mean. But it's not just raw jazz. There's always personal, a personal style of Copeland that gives it a certain elegance, a humor of his own, uh, like this. See? And you'll also hear another typical Copeland element which is those biting, funky dissonances that 20 years ago, when the piece was written, used to make people wince at what they called crazy modern music, but which today seem as right and simple as an average rock group, like this. That last dissonance was mine, not his. Uh, uh, don't forget that this clarinet concerto was commissioned and first performed by Benny Goodman, the king of swing. And these days when we're all rediscovering the swing era and big bands and jazz and the rest, this concerto seems more timely than ever before. And one of the miracles of the piece is that all this jazzy music is scored for an orchestra with no brass and no percussion at all. Imagine jazz without drums. And yet it all comes swinging out with a great beat out of a simple orchestra made up of only strings, a harp, a piano, and naturally the solo clarinet. Of course, this piece isn't all swinging jazz. Remember, there's that slow section at the beginning that I talked about, and a beauty it is, which shows us another aspect of the Copeland language, the simple singing lyrical side. It's simple, but so special so sophisticated, every note chosen with immense care, so that no matter how simple the music is, it, it's always as fresh as new bread. Uh, when F Copeland first wrote this concerto back in 1948, and he played it for me on the piano, I became very conscious of this highly selective note picking. I remember his playing the ravishing opening theme When he came to this note, that one, that E flat in the bass, I involuntarily went mm, with delight, and Copeland said, that's the note that costs. And that's just the whole point about Copeland. His notes are expensive, not just lots of notes a dime a dozen. So now let's listen to this expensive concerto. And here to play it with us is our high-priced soloist, the Philharmonic's great solo clarinetist, Stanley Drucker.